Hello. In this movie, I will demonstrate how to use Visual Studio 2008 to process form data from an HTML form on the server side. For this example, I have already created an HTML form. This form has basic characteristics. It has two text fields and a submit button. On the code side of this form, you can see that it has a uh, form element that defines a post method, meaning that we will actually send encoded form data instead of va values in the URL itself, and that the form data will be sent to a server-side page called processName.aspx. This HTML source shows two input fields. The key thing about these fields is they have a name attribute specified, a first name and last name. Without those name attributes, it's very difficult to retrieve the form values. So what we now need to do is to create a file called processName.aspx. So in Visual Studio, I'm going to click on the project and then right click and choose Add New Item. And I'm going to add a web, web form called processName.aspx. One characteristic of ASPX files that we're going to take advantage of is that they can either be configured to have their, their program code in a separate file or for all logic to be handled in one single file. We're going to choose to have all logic handled in a single file to keep things a bit more simple. When I click Add, the file's created. So now what I want to do is demonstrate what will happen with that file created. So I'm going to go back to my HTML file and I'm going to right click it and choose View in Browser. Now that I've done this, I have my form. So I'm going to type a name and click Submit. And you can see nothing on the page, but the URL says processName.aspx. So what has happened is my original HTML page submitted the form to the ASPX file. The ASPX file then rendered HTML back to the web browser. So if I choose View Source, you can see the little bit of HTML that was automatically created by the web server. Back in Studio, what I want to do is actually display the first name and last name values on the web server side. To do this, I'm going to go into the HTML template of the ASPX file, and I'm going to use a method called response.form to retrieve the form values by name as specified in the form itself. So to do this, I simply type response. Well, first, I have to also write the values out to the page. And to do that, I need to work within a special area of the page that's designated as server-side code. You do this by using a less than sign followed by percent as the beginning and a, less than, and a percent followed by greater than as the end of the zone of the file where you'll work on the server-side. I'm going to use a special method called response.write. And whatever you type in a response.write will appear literally on the page. So what we'll put here is, this is my content. Now, when I view the form in the browser again, enter some data, and click Submit, we see this is my content because that's what we've instructed the page to write. So what we want now is to actually show the variables that were received. So I'm going to put response.write request.form first name because that correlates to my HTML forms first name input element right there first name so ASPX we're writing it out again I actually need two parentheses because I have request.form needs two parentheses as does response.write so now when I view my form in a browser I'm going to type a first name and a last name. And we can see Bob came across. And when we view source, you can see that Bob appears between these div tags. But none of the code to, to render the form that we typed appears because it's only intended for the server side. So instead, all we received is the divs. And this content here was replaced by the actual output of that method. And that demonstrates the basics of retrieving form variables. Another thing that you can do 
is to retrieve query string variables. So this action to process name.aspx, I can actually populate a variable right there. I can put something like mode equals one and save. And then on the web server side, I can replace request form with request.query string. And I can replace this value of first name with mode. So now when I run my page, you'll actually see the number one appear. And again, this is simply because we're retrieving the URL query string variable instead of the form variable. It just shows some of the variety of ways that you can retrieve data in a web server form.